the first time this gent hit the stage, he scared the hell out of me. He came up and, and all of us. And, and he tells stories. And he told me that, and this is a guy who I truly think has a demented, beautiful mind, that this was a story based on one of his dreams. So we're going to take a chance and we're going to let him up here. And maybe if we put enough positive energy in, he won't scare the hell out of us. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> juxtapros. Hello, everybody. Hi. How y'all doing tonight? Let's try that again. How y'all doing tonight? That's a little better. That's unfortunate because that's usually the way I introduce my band because I'm trying to get things pumped up. This is a little bit less of a pumped up kind of thing, but as he said, this is a song, this is a, not a song, it's a story based off a dream I had. Um, keep in mind, it's a little experimental because I kind of experiment a little bit with the, the point of view near the end, so keep paying attention to kind of the viewpoint that keeps switching near the end and you know because it kind of gets a little confusing but anyway I'll start the sky was permeated with obsidian shapes and flashes of a winter yet to come these buildings twisted into indistinguishable faces writhing in anguish known by no living creature a wind wishing to have been born from frost brings voice to these faces in the shadows up above. As my eyes drew upwards to call out their cries, they met with the falling rain, sliding back behind my windows to dampen my infrastructure. Air finding its way into my lungs held the scent of isolation and carried no voice for me to recognize. Still, I walked amongst the abandoned dwellings that remained to await those who once lived there to return. But now all that lived here was a bitter chill in the air and the echoes continuing to move wall to wall with no ears to fall upon. Attempts to recall how I found myself wandering this place fell short, but my scattered memories were only my company. A dream it may be, a terrain conjured up by an illness within the mind pondering the very sights created by itself, each building, each footstep, a further descent into a fever. But mayhap these footsteps find themselves on true ground these eyes imbibing true sights in front of them. This debate continues within a mind that I may have created. How does one think within a mind created by one's own mind? While I pondered this, rain continued to fall, embracing me in a dampness continuing to bring a chill to my skin that may only be imagined. I sought shelter within a home that leaked crimson light out from its windows and a doorway my breath deepening as I felt the chill grow angry behind me, the door closing to refuse it entry. The wind cursed the outer walls, demanding my return, as it had not quite finished with me. Instead, I sought the source of this crimson light, moving towards the heart of the home. The interior was barren with dust as its only inhabitant. Each room held no furniture, no portraits, no sign of a life once lived. Sounds of my footsteps melted in the air to combine with the voices of vacancy and remnants of the echoes of from the home's lost denizens. From a broken door in the hallway I found myself standing in came the crimson light that brought me here and beckoned me to find its origin. As I approached the cracked door, the hallway extended further from my destination. Each step became another mile, and each mile became another eternity. For years, I walked towards the shattered door, reaching out to feel it, open only to find it stretching further and further away from my grasp. It was when I became an old man that I finally found myself before the crooked and beaten door. It was when my beard lightly caressed the tips of my feet and my hair touched the nook of my back that I felt this door open before me. Inside was empty, except for a fireplace burning the fire of a single color, the color I had been chasing. A deep red flame licked at the chimney where it slumbered. In front of the fireplace sat a dusty, dilapidated chair that faced away from me as if trying to warm itself by the scarlet fire. It was then that I noticed my breathing was accompanied by another breath in the room. Something was sitting in the chair before me. 
Curiosity pushed me to approach the entity, but fear pulled me towards the door. Fear was not my friend here, but Curiosity laid its arm around me, comforting me towards seeking an answer to the riddle of who shared the air in this room with me. Slowly, I approached the old chair, a nervous chill apprehensively licking up my spine. As my body turned to face the front of the chair, my eyes fell upon the shadow sitting upon it. The nervous chill became a winter snow. For the face that I saw was no other than my own, my own from when I was once young. I was a child that sat in this chair staring up at me while I gazed upon myself from above as an old man. With both mind's eyes, I saw myself bathed in a crimson firelight. I felt my youth open his mouth, still staring at me with insidious child's eyes. From that mouth began a howl, a sound that I had never heard. The sound became a void, invading every orifice, every sensation in the old man's body. He felt his throat producing this howl, and felt the agony it created in me. I stood as the old man fell to his knees, collapsing from the ache of the screech. The sound continued to permeate every corner of the room, overflowing into each crevice, entering each corner until the walls slowly began to crumble. I screamed and I screamed until the entire town began to shudder, the buildings began to crack, and the ground began to collapse. All that existed crumbled into shadowy matter, melting and dissolving into each other like liquid night and evanescent twilight combining to create a potent potion of chaos. Light began to vanish, and darkness began to decay, and all that was nothing mated with all that was. It was then that the fire went out. It was then that I awoke. 